we will we, the report will uh, remove the local opt out. Uh, it will be statewide application that handgun carry permit holders will be allowed to carry their their handguns uh, in in any park. Um, the exception is that if a school or a public university, maybe public universities are included, but if a school or public university is using the public park, the handgun carry permit holder cannot be within the immediate vicinity of the of the activity, uh, the school activity. And if they are, if they are, and they're notified that that there's a, that this activity is a school activity. They've got to vacate. What's an immediate what is the vicinity? immediate vicinity? Inve immediate vicinity is is not going to be defined. It's the immediate vicinity. Uh, if you go into a specific feat or a specific thing, we've created a gun-free zone, and that's that's not what we want to do. We don't want to do have a specific area because who walks it off? What's the distance? Uh, we're trying to create a situation where the lawful handgun carry permit holder uh, is able to protect themselves, but not interfere with um, school events. So, so it sounds like, I guess that would be up to the discretion of a park ranger? Be, it'd be this? law enforcement, law enforcement. Uh, and, and, and again, even if even law enforcement, a district attorney. Uh, would have the same same prosecutorial prosecutorial discretion. Okay. Why why did you all remove the state capital from the from this? If this is good enough for the parks, why not for you guys? And Different issue. Um, as I talked about before, uh, I don't see it as hypocritical. I know some people did, but but in a state park, it's wide open. There is no limited access points. Whereas in the state capital, you have limited access points. You have law enforcement provided. There is government protection. Where you are not able to protect yourself, the government should protect you. And that in the Capitol building, you are protected. In a park, you're unprotected. So it's not, to me, it's not hypocritical at all. It's actually fundamentally sound under the Constitution as enacted. Now, what about the situation where Senator Yarbrough talks about where it's a park, not school property, but a park directly adjacent to a school, but no school event is going on in the park, but school is going on. That's where we were We were trying to uh, make clear the language is you are not as a handgun carry permit holder allowed to go on to school property. Well, what about the park adjo adjoining the school property? If you're in a park adjoining school property and you're a handgun carry permit holder, as long as the school is not using, at that time, using the park, you can go into the park. So, so let's. So, so, I mean, the argument in terms of schools going in lockdown. I know there are several schools in Davidson County that are just adjoining. I mean, you know, the, you can't tell where the park stops and where the school grounds begin. Uh, you can walk right, right up and still be lawful. How, how, how is the school supposed to know? How's the lawful handgun carry permit holder supposed to know? Well, if he sees the concern there. on this, remember, guys, we are talking about a fundamental right. We're not talking about. This is the same as free speech. We're talking about the fundamental right to protect yourself. And so if the government's not going to protect you, you need to be able to protect yourself. The Supreme Court was very clear that there are, as a result of the Heller and McDonald decisions, there are some policy decisions that are off the table. And so this issue was decided in 1789 and in 16, or in 1860 or 1869 when the 14th Amendment was adopted. So it's a constitutional right to defend yourself. And so if the government isn't going to protect you, you need to be able to protect yourself. So but is well, it, is in it, that case, why do you need a law to do this? I thought Heller applied to the possession of guns within someone's home. Home. Well, this isn't their home. This is out and about. Again, if, if you, are, you are able to protect yourself where you are, but if it, so, if it's a fundamental right, then you don't need a law. You can just do the, the what court John Harris right. wants, which is open carry. And the court anywhere. was very clear: there are limits, just like in the First Amendment. There are limits to where free speech can occur. Mm -hmm. There are limits, and this court specifically said schools and government buildings were places where the fundamental right can be limited. Can you can you talk about the specific language you're saying? It's going to be property that's being used by a park. 
you, or a school? The, the, the language, the intent is to capture the time periods where a school is using a park facility. So uh, the, the objections we heard were, were schools uh, utilizing an athletic field, ball games going yeah. on, and, and people were uncomfortable with handgun carry permit holders being in a ball game. So we want to try to limit uh, handgun carry permit holders being in the immediate vicinity because under Supreme Court precedent, because it's a fundamental right, this has to be narrowly tailored uh, to not substantially uh, limit the, uh, the fundamental right, right to the carry. Reason I, the reason I asked So we have to be very careful about right. where we're stepping on someone's fundamental right to protect themselves. The reason I asked though is that, does that mean that it has to be like a school sanctioned event or if like five school kids are playing on the playground, that counts as a school using the playground? Again, we, 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 we discussed that. It needs to be a school sanctioned event. It and is so not just, it's not just kids playing on the playground. So, so if that same, if, that, if there's 500 kids at a park for a private little league tournament that is not a school sanctioned event, then this law wouldn't apply. Correct. Oh, okay. So are you not concerned about people carrying the uh, permit holders carrying guns into the Capitol? <laughs> no, I'm not. No, I'm, I'm not concerned with that. I'd be comfortable with, with handgun carry permit holders coming into the Capitol. The weather report is now, are you comfortable that this will satisfy the governor? Because he's expressed concerns, particularly about the park issue. I, I, can't, I can't speak for the governor. The governor, um, I mean, he, he will make it. He'll see. It's not fair to him. He hasn't seen the written report. So once he has an opportunity to review it, he can. you can ask that question to the governor. So a school resource officer who looks out the school window in an adjoining park and sees someone openly carrying, and they're just supposed to what, ignore it? Lock down the school. What? Call the police. What authority does a school resource officer have to enforce the laws outside of the school grounds? I don't know. Well, I mean, what advice would you give the school resource officer who sees someone right outside the building, as happened at Hillsborough High School last year? I think common sense comes into play. That if if you're going to if you see someone it looks like uh, they're they're carrying a weapon near a school, nine one one watch the person. I mean, common sense comes into play. Okay. Does this provide any clarification on the whole artificial guns aspect? Yeah, all that language is removed. Just removed? Okay. Removed all that language. When can we get a copy of the majority report? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, Ty, uh, uh, as soon as it's done. When do you expect it to well, be? Yeah. Uh, under the rules, um, once I get all the signatures on it, I believe there's 24-hour rule on the Senate side comes into play, so Thursday I expect to be on the on the floor. Okay. Thanks, sir.